My lips are bothering me. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones, a show with hot questions and even hotter wings. Today, I'm joined by Harley Morenstein from Epic Meal Time. What's going on, man? Thank you so much for having me. And this is kind of a unique episode because I don't know whose episode's gonna come out first. I don't know how all that stuff is gonna work, but we did the old switcheroo. Yeah. So I did the Epic Meal Time Handle It show. And of course, because you have the Hot Ones guy on, we made the hottest damn ribs that you can possibly make with the help of Mega Death Sauce. So I'm walking in here sweating. I've got the cold sweats a little bit, my stomach's rumbling, my lips are on fire, and I haven't even eaten a wing yet. How are you doing? I have a headache and I'm sick. We had this earlier and like, <laughs> I just almost got over it. Like I'm now I'm certain that I'm not gonna barf. So like, I'm good now, good. This might be the best episode of Hot Ones ever. It might be the worst episode yeah. of Hot Ones ever. We don't really know. I like you. But so far, this has been like the worst day for me of 2016. It's also, I spent the day with you. Same, I like you too. We're already like friends, I feel yeah. like. But we're putting each other through some shit. Yeah, people don't bond like this. <laughs> no. People don't People don't do this. It's a shared struggle. And by the way, if you're a Hot Ones fan, you're gonna love Epic Meal Time. So when this episode's over, shoot over to Epic Meal Time. Subscribe if you haven't already. But my guess is we probably have a lot of the same fans anyway. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to get it going? I'm very, very prepared. But first we start with Sriracha. You ready for Sriracha? Yeah. Sriracha, no big deal. Definitely not a big deal. So when I watch your videos, I'm so fascinated by the way that you can order off of a fast food menu. I've never seen anything like it in all my life. This is one burger, okay? Oh, that's how small it is. Yeah. Okay, 175, please. And one of the things that stands out to me is when you were doing that fast food lasagna video and you just said to the employee at McDonald's, can I get a liter? of Big Mac sauce. And she hit you back like, yeah, sure, pull up to window two. Like she gets that kind of request every single day. Can I get a liter of Big Mac sauce on the side? No problem. She was so nonchalant about it. I think that's just like a, a stone teenager working at McDonald's, like whatever, I don't care. It's gonna pop up on the computer and someone's gonna handle that shit in the kitchen. Move your ass along next car. But the guy that came on brought the liter of Big Mac sauce my boy, Hassan, holding it down 24 seven. Is it party? Like, no. Whenever I go to McDonald's now, casually, and like he happens to see me, he's like, oh my gosh, what are you here for? Is it gonna be crazy? I'm like, no, no, I'm just being fat by myself. It's not work, it's just, he's like, okay, okay, you call me if you ever come, take my number down. Do you have any other off menu things or fast food menu hacks that you could recommend to the people out there? Think about this, you know how there's like a Taco Bell and a KFC and they're under the same roof? Mm -hmm. Why can't you ask? for a fried chicken burrito. They should be able to handle it. Is that fucking dumb? Like, why can't I get, you know, the KFC fries done Supreme style with cheese and, and stuff on it? Like, why can't I do that? Why can't there be a taco pizza if it's a pizza taco bell? Why can't it be a pizza taco? You know, like, why is it always gotta be me? So I'm just, this is a piece of advice. If you work at Taco Bell, KFC combo, just make a fried chicken taco, do it for me. This is my boy Tapatish. Taylor Swift complimented your beard? Only time in my entire life I was speechless. I was at iHeartRadio and I'm backstage and you know, people walk by like 50 Cent, Chris Pratt. I'm like, oh, they're so cool. You know, I'm like trying to take pictures of people. And then this like phalanx of managers and people in suits, like 50 men in suits. And in the middle of them, towering above them by like two and a half feet, standing like 11 feet tall is like Taylor Swift in heels. This like phalanx of managers is moving and she's like kind of in the middle, like controlling them. She's like Xerxes in 300, you know, she's practically riding on them. Exactly, and they're moving her through the back. I see her and I was like, oh my God. So I just go, Taylor. And she stops. And then so all the managers stop and like they all look at me and she looks at me and she goes, that's a beautiful beard. I had her attention that moment. And I could normally play it cool, I'm normally confident. Not this time, I, I didn't know whether to be like, thanks, or huh, I know, or cool, or it's not the only beautiful thing, or whatever, I don't know what to do. You had an but opportunity. I, a small window, and I didn't know which of those things I wanted to say, so when she was like, you have a beautiful beard, I was like, 
Guai. <laughs> and then she just kind of like turned straight and they kept going. And I was like, oh, shh. Like, I'm not a high enough power level to even communicate. Dude, when I went to bed that night, I lay down and obviously I felt horrible about it all, but I lay down and I was like, huh, made her stop. <laughs> made them all stop. Just good wings. Like, I'm just enjoying myself right now. It'll change. Just like with your show, I had so much fun cooking with you. It was so much fun. Until the end. Same vibe. When we hurt ourselves. Do you think that some of the appeal of Epic Mealtime might be that it kind of flies in the face of the way that food culture is trending? Because there's so much of these like Gwyneth Paltrow, goop, sort of ding dong snobby people. And I think sometimes people just might like that it's a little bit more real, that it's a little bit more primitive, that it's a little bit more visceral with Epic Meal Time, and maybe that might be some of the appeal. Do you ever think about that? Totally, I, I, try, and, I try and analyze it a lot, and I think, you know, there has to be balance to everything. And there was a strong organic vegan movement, oh, uh, bacon cheeseburgers are horrible, that, you know, it birthed Epic Meal Time in 2010. Like, you made this. You were so dead set about it being one way, that there just has to be a balance in the universe. And that's where Epic Meal Time came, to just counter the scales as it made the culinary world approachable to your average Joe. Because they'd look at people like me and be like, oh, this idiot's in the kitchen doing it. I should get in the kitchen too. Like who says you gotta anything to get in the kitchen? I like tacos, I like pizza. I'm sure I can make both of those and put them together. Now it's a fun little creation. That happens in 2010, but now we're 2016 and we're getting people tweeting us pictures of their chef knives tattooed on their forearm. They're like, I went to culinary school because of Epic Meal Time. And I'm like, great. Now you know how to cook better than all of us. I'm not like, you gotta eat until you die. I'm doing that for entertainment purposes. Exactly. But I am saying get comfortable around food, get comfortable around cooking, and anyone can do it. Pain is good. We're turning it on. We're turning it on. Pain is young good man on there? there. I think this is a young me. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, from T-Ball. Nice. You really leaned out. Thank you. Oh, it gets hot now? Not yet. We're so good. You've had so many amazing guests on Epic Meal Time, and much like our show, you guys seem to favor the oddballs. So, I want to bring up some that stand out to me, and you can just tell me what you remember about that day. Just react to it, okay? Yes, sir. I would guess that this might have been your favorite epic mealtime shoot ever. Was the time that you made the ostrich egg sandwich on the tank, was that the greatest day you had, doing that with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. The first movie I ever saw in theaters was Terminator 2. And I was five years old, so you can imagine how that would blow your mind when you're five. And I left there and I was like, this is what I want to do in life. I'm like five, I'm like, I want to do movies. Movies are the coolest ever. I'm like, that's how I got into doing what I'm doing. The first epic mealtime episode ever, I'm wearing an Arnold Schwarzenegger t-shirt. I'm like, I should wear my Arnold shirt. Nah, that's stupid. He wouldn't like it. No, maybe he'll love it. Nah, what would he want? And then I'm like, you know, and then like, you know, by the end of it, I was like, oh yeah, it was great. He's like, yeah, I like you. I'm like, yeah, I almost wore my Arnold shirt. And then I thought maybe you think that was weird, so I didn't do it. And now, you know, I'm chilling. When we're chilling, how crazy is that? He's like, I gotta go. <laughs> Swear to God, he's like, I gotta go. And he hopped in his tank. I'm not even joking. He got in his tank. He has a tank. And he drove away, and I was like, fucking cool. Let me ask you about a guy that we had on our show. You made the Cinnabon Supreme with a young riffraff. What was that like? Young riffraff. You mean by young riffraff, you mean he was like 88 pounds lighter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> you know this. The guy is always on. Right. He's always making jokes. Joke after joke after joke. And I do that too, but then people tend to get like annoyed of me after like three hours. Like, Riff Raff gets better. Right. Like, he gets better. Riff Raff he's definitely literally, warms up, yep. Yeah, he's literally like one of the funniest guys I've spent time with. Just listening to him and the things that he says, just fucking crazy. How's making uh, pizza cake with Tony Hawk? We made pizza cake with Tony Hawk. We got a skateboard actually in the other room. He came to my house and we cooked something and he was like, oh, he called me, he's like, shit, I left my skateboard. I was like, oh, sorry. He's like, yeah, keep it. I'm like, no, for real, take it. No, take it. He's like, nah, keep it. My favorite thing is just like, scare people like, oh, cool skateboard, is it? I'm like, oh. It's just Tony Hawk's skateboard. <laughs> it's good. Holly, are you just saying that? I was fucking so ready to tell you you got a shit hot sauce. You can I do was it. so ready. No, but it's actually good. I'm not going to lie. We spent all day together and talked about it a little bit, but I do want to talk to you about it on our show because I need some advice. You're kind of YouTube OG. As some guy who's networked up, who's worked the room and all those things, do you have any advice for how Hot Ones can get its seat at the table? Well, I think you guys do have a seat at the table now. It's just that like when I first started, you know, when YouTube in 2010, there was probably 
15 or 20 channels that had over a million subscribers. Now there's like a million channels with a million subscribers. Like now I go to VidCon, you know, where I used to know everyone, and like some kid walks through the lobby and everyone's like screaming and like, and they're going nuts. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? And people are like, oh shit, you don't know Chaz? He's the newest shit <laughs> on uh, Musical.ly. And I'm like, what the fuck are you even saying to me? <laughs> The seat at the table thing isn't so important because it's just better to make your own table and, you know, put wings on cutting boards and make sure no one fucking copies your idea. Right. And then fuck the other table. But you can't because this is actually literally your table. Yeah, it's my table, so <laughs> don't fuck with it. Maruga blood orange scorpion pepper sauce. Shit. Oh, that's tasty. Oh no, I'm gonna get like that? That happens to me? Oh, it's tasty at first, but it kind of gets in. Like I fucking hate milk and I know I'm gonna have to turn to his bitch ass. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to ask you to speak on behalf of all Canadians. Some of the biggest stars in America right now are Canadian, but they spend a lot of time in the United States. And I wonder for Canadians, is it kind of like when a baby buffalo gets pet at Yellowstone by a human and then the entire herd rejects them? When we left to LA for like, Two years, when we came back, there was a lot of like, ah, you guys are back now, eh? Okay, mm. yeah, guess it didn't work out for you there. Or we're like, oh yeah, Mr. Hotshot Hollywood. And I gotta come to the corner and get bagels with the rest of us. Really? It's just like, it's like a, like a semi, like Montreal specifically is sensitive. You know what I mean? Um, we don't have many personalities here and when people leave Montreal, it's not so bad to go to the States. It's like, oh cool, he made it, he went to the States. But like, if you go to Toronto, it's like, you fucking trading bitch. You went to Toronto, it's just another Canadian city. Same as here, what's wrong with you? Wow, oh, now I feel it turning on. Mm -hmm. Now they're bringing it. Mm-hmm. Now. What kinds of YouTube comments piss you off the most? You know, I, I even got a person say it to me in person once, someone that didn't really know me, they're like, hmm. All that food's pretty big waste, you know? People are going hungry. I know that. Of course I know that. And I'm already Jewish, so I have a built-in guilt already. No matter, before this even started, I was guilty of something. I just felt guilty. Mm -hmm. We took a portion of our budget, our TV budget, we donated to feedingamerica.org. You know, we mentioned it once at the end of a TV episode, just to be like, go check it out yourselves, not to be like, this is what we did, we're so good. But like, I did something. The people that are writing those comments are like, huh, people are going hungry. Who cares if you're saying in my comment section or any comment section, if it's something you feel- You do it. Get the fuck off yeah. the internet and go down to the fucking soup kitchen and handle that shit. I'm with you 100%. Internalize that energy and then channel it into something positive. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you do have an ability to make change and if it is something that bothers you, fine. Go out and make a difference. That's what I, I hate, the useless comments. You know what I mean? Or when they're like, oh, Harley's an unfuckable ogre. Okay, I know. I beat DJ Khaled. Doing laps around DJ Khaled. That's all I had to do. He was the only guy I wanted to beat because he the best. Can you talk a little bit about the mechanics of eating with a beard like that? Because Action Bronson has a whole like, Thing that he does. I I'm love trying to him watch you. holding it and doing it. I'm watching you this whole time. You don't seem to have a plan. But Ooh, can you yeah, talk my milk about it? is so good. I love my milk. <laughs> mm. Drinking milk and talking about action bronze is my favorite thing. Mmm. <laughs> Yum. This really give me a hard time. Hit you a little bit. She got milk all over my shorts. I hate you. <laughs> um, my lips are bothering me. Uh, That's what happens. What's saying about this idiot? Who? Oh no, Action Bronson, not an idiot. God forbid, I get body slammed off the stage. <laughs> Man, I watch, I love watching him on Munchies. You know, when he bends down, he's eating, he moves his beard, and I watch it, and I'm just like, we are honestly convinced he's gonna die on that show. He's so huge, he makes everything look so tasty. And my beard is different, my beard is just stiff. Like, he looks down, his beard falls. So that's why he pulls that move? I think so, my beard is just not moving. Yeah, you don't also, need to. Also, I need to wash, I wash my beard every day. I don't wash my hair every day, but I wash my beard every day. Like, right now there's milk and hot sauce in it. Like, that's gross. Imagine, <laughs> making out with me. Some human beings have chosen to do that in their life. I can't imagine. Soaking my lips in my own mouth of milk. 
<laughs> so this is Mad Dog 357, 357,000 Scovilles. It used to be our hottest sauce, and now it's our second hottest sauce. Cool, for me, thank you. That's yep. so cool. This sauce. Red carpet tree. very hot. Use it at your own risk. There's gotta be a way to do it that I just don't have to touch with my lips. Uh, I don't know. So, huh. Before it sucks, really tasty. Really That's tasty. the thing about Mad Dog, is it's like, if they didn't make this the hottest sauce ever, it would be a great sauce. But then they put- It still tastes good. And yeah. it's slowly, it's, it, it's not burning from here, it's like coming from inside up. That's fucked up. So Montreal consistently ranks on all these lists as one of the best bachelor party cities I wonder, first, does that ring true to you? Second, can you give me a Saturday itinerary? Fuck! What did you ask? Oh, here's what's happening. Let's cut the bullshit. Yep, okay. give it to me. You just flew into Montreal yep. today. Yep. We're filming this. This is done. You're going to go shower. I'm going to go shower. Yep. We're going to come back here. We're going to do a shit ton of drugs. Cool. We're going to hop into an Uber. Yes. We're going to go to Super Sex. You're going to kiss on boobies. You're going to touch it. They're going to take your straw. They're going to put it inside. Then they're going to put it back in your drink. You're going to be like, I've never experienced anything like this. Some strange guy's going to come out. He's going to give you powder. And he's going to be like, put this in your nose. And you're going to be like, okay, Montreal, I only live once. And then you and I are going to go to the Nuno Massage. We'll be in separate rooms. They're gonna lie you on the floor onto an inflatable mattress. They're gonna dump oil on you. Then two beautiful Montreal women that don't speak the same language as you are gonna come out and they're gonna roll their naked bodies all over yours until you bust into your own belly button. Wow! Then I'm gonna give you a lift back to your hotel. I'm gonna tuck you in, give you a high five and be like, hey man, it was really awesome meeting you. Remember Montreal forever. Can I just, I have a suggestion. Yeah. Do this show on ecstasy. Really? Yeah. I'm not saying Dying. my suggestion's a good one. I'm just saying you should do that one day. Why would that help? I don't think it will. I think it would be worse. So this is Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage. Of course, you and I know all about that because your boys tried to, not tried to, they did prank us and they put the Blair's Mega Death Sauce into the rib rub and then that's why we're coming undone the way we are. On the 10th wing, it's kind of tradition to dab it with an, a little extra, a little extra. You don't have to if you don't want to, Harley. I know you're pretty blasted out right now, but if you want to, you can join me. Yeah, Sean, I'm gonna make you make me look like a bitch in my own house. <laughs> That's my guy. Okay, who the fuck is Blair? He's a jerk. I, it's a he. Oh, Could be a she. Totally thought nah, Blair. but you know what though? I, all right. I think <sighs> that a dude, you'd have to be like a jerk off dude to make something like this. Like women are, too smart to end up making a product like this, yeah. you know? A woman would never make a fast food lasagna. She's way too smart for that. Exactly. Okay. This is fucking stupid. Very deliberate, Harley. <laughs> that qualifies. All right. Cheers. Just slow down for a second. Chill. All right. We'll go at your pace, my man. Like I have so much drool already building. Aren't we designed so strangely humans? Why would I start drooling? Like, oh, prepare. My brain is like, oh, it's the shit again. You know, this sucks, so get wet. Yeah, what primitive instinct is kicking in here? Sweating in the face. Okay, hey, you're ready. We touch, and you we touch. should probably do one of those. You know these guys? Shut off. I really don't want to do this. You don't really have to, but. I know. <laughs> mm, fucking Blair. If you could have anyone on Epic Meal Time, living or dead, who would it be and what would you make? I'm just like really trying to get on top of it mentally. How are you feeling? I've been here. Do you kind of like it? I've been here three times before. <laughs> At Burning Man, oh, fuck. Woodstock. Bill Murray, nothing, we talk. Harley, you made it through. I was a little worried about you because that rib put you out, but you did it. Watch me die. Floor is yours. Let the people know what you got going on in your life. Hello, it's your boy Harley. Sweatiest eyelids in the game. 
I swear to God, I've never sweat from my eyelids before, but I'm sweating up here. Uh, follow me on everything at Harley Plays, youtube.com slash Harley Moore, daily videos, epic meal time, you already know who it is. Me and John are gonna tear it up tonight. <laughs>